Stephen Bergvine. Actually, Charlie Eckershare was talking about um, saying that he's a player that Spurs hold in very high regard. Ajax have been interested, but there's been no bid as of yet. I mean, Bergvine from the friendlies look like he's come back really fit um, with a mission and with a point to prove it looks like. Yeah, he does. He looks a lot leaner. He looks a lot sharper. And um, I'm liking the look of Bergvine. He still needs to um, be more effective in the final third and make um, and, and make better decisions. But I feel like Bergvine at the moment um, is a player that Spurs, um, I think considering his age, Considering how long he's been in the club, I think he's one we still hold a lot more hope on. The only thing with Bergvine, I would say, is I, when he gets into the final third, I actually think, what from what I've seen, his his crossing is actually pretty good. Mm. He's actually got a pretty good delivery in that sense, and he can put a pinpoint cross in, um, for which which is underrated. But what I don't, what I don't, what I think he needs to work on is when he when he gets into shooting positions. He doesn't have much finesse in his uh, shooting technique. He likes to shoot with a lot of power, and he ha- and he has good power on his shots. But I feel like um, when when a, when a situation requires a bit of composure and a bit of finesse, just put a plant, pass it into the corner and stuff. He's, he's he's just found a bit rash. Wanting. I think the word is rash. Yeah, it's know, a bit rash. And I think he needs to work on that. He needs to work on his technique and in that sense. And he needs to work on having a bit more finesse, a bit more guile in his play. Um, but I do think he's a player physically, um, dribbling-wise, strength-wise, he's still got a lot of potential. He's got a lot to give. And I'm, I'm, I like the look of him. And I think in the right situations, he can be very, very effective. There's just a few games, a few... Um, things he needs to work on in his game but I think he can and I think he's already signed to improve in other facets um uh, he's still young as well 23 so he's still got a bit of time to improve and um I'm sure uh we can um, Nuno can get the best out of him um but it's interesting to see Lucas Mora the saying the um he said that it says here the art the paragraph here from Echo says uh, making a similarly positive impression. Now, I was following on a, an article about Delhi, so, uh, making a similarly positive impression was Bergvine, whom Spurs would like to keep hold of. Are Ajax interested but um, have not made an offer? The preference is to sell Mora. Um, to sell Mora looks to be good news for the Dutchman, but the arrival of Hill means the competition on the left hand side for that position is uh, is going to be intensified. Bergvine will hope he's done enough in pre season to feature Nuno plans he certainly looks sharp cutting in from the left on Wednesday which he did it's worth remembering that he was on the right uh, hand side last season when Spurs enjoyed their best run of form which is true mm. um, when he was playing that more defensive winger yeah. kind of role and helping out the team but um, what do you think of the fact that Spurs are more willing to sell Lucas than Bergvan is I that think, I think it makes sense to be honest just look at the two players ages I know but judging from what you've seen maybe on um, during pre-season and maybe even from the back end of last season when Mora was having a good run do you think that's um, do you think that's sen- sensible uh, to be selling Lucas right now? Or would you like to maybe to see what Nuno can do with him? I would like to see what Nuno can do with him. But when you're looking at the squad, uh, when you're looking at the ages of the squad, I mean, he wouldn't be the first to go, but he would definitely be. Um, he needs to go in the next couple of years, doesn't he? Assuming his age and and the value that we can get for him. So I mean, Lucas Mora isn't one of those indispensable players where where you have to keep at all costs. If you get a good offer for him, he goes, mm-hmm. um, and that's the only way he goes. If you get an exceptional offer, which you can't refuse at the end of the day. And I think with Stephen Bergvine. Um, he's got the ceiling to become a very, very, very good player. Um, I think he's got a lot of attributes that can work really well in the Premier League. He's got age on his side as well. Are you convinced yet he could be better than Lucas? <sighs> it's difficult to say. It's difficult to say. You can't really say right now because Lucas Moura has got some attributes that I think that Steven Bergwijn probably will never have. Mm-hmm. But I think that Steven Bergwijn might have the ceiling to be uh, providing for us on a more consistent basis that Lucas Moura ever did. That's, that's what I think. Yeah, I think Bergvan has the potential to be more effective in the final third. But in terms of actually being a better player, like I don't think Bergvine is ever going to be able to dribble like Lucas. I don't think that's ever possible. I don't think Bergvine's ever going to be able to wriggle out tight situations like Lucas can. Lucas is just a genius and he's, he's world class at that. He could do that in his sleep. Bergvine's never going to be able to do that. But in terms of getting in, getting into scoring positions, getting in the final third and getting goals and assists, I think he has the potential to be more, more effective than Lucas. I think so. And, you know, Bergvine likes to, to find that space more often. I think he even can dribble from deep and, you know, he can, can have power and precision is in his um, delivery and his uh, dribbling so I think Steven Bergvine can be definitely be an asset for us moving forward um, but you've got to remember with Lucas Moura as well like he's been here for quite a long time and he's never found that proper consistency in his game no but, he, but, but 
but the, the the thought process was with Nuno coming in potentially he could be the best manager for him. Could be just because he he's dealt with like for example Adama Traore who's got similar skill sets, similar attributes to Lucas, and he uh, same the, can be applied for Steven Bergwijn. No, I don't think so. I think it's different. I think Bergwijn is a bit different to uh, um, someone like Adama Traore. I think Adama Traore um, is is that real powerhouse dribbling ability and who can really just burst past you like you're not there. I don't think Bergwijn quite has that the same way Lucas can does it. I think he can have that. Not as much as Lucas. I don't think he has the dribbling ability like Lucas, but I definitely think that the more Bergwijn progresses his game, the more he kind of um, gets coached into it. I think he can add that to his game. I really believe that. I don't know. I don't think he has. I don't think he has that ability. I'm not sure. I think he's just a different kind of player. He's, I think. I think he's. I don't think he has that ability. I think he has to work harder than than Lucas Moura to beat players. I think, um, despite the fact he's got good strength about him, is that he's a strong player and he's got deep good pace. But he's not um, in in terms of dribbling ability. I don't think he's got that exceptional dribbling ability that Lucas has. I don't see it just yet. Maybe he can develop it. But I think at the moment, someone like Adama Traore. Um, is a, a, and Lucas Moura a different level to Bergwijn in that in that sense. But in terms of Adama Traore, like his his uh, attributes and ability were unbelievable. But his problem was his his effectiveness and effectiveness and decision making in the final third, and that's the same thing Lucas da- had a problem with. And Ada- he was Still able does. <laughs> and yeah. And Adama, he was able for, anyway, for last couple of seasons ago, he was able to get the best out of Adama Traore in, in an attacking sense. And he was actually starting to provide goals and assists. Although last season, he kind of reverted back. You would have to say that one season, he did really get that, that effectiveness. And could he bring that out of Lucas Moura? I'd like to see if he could. Um, but yeah, obviously, if we get a mouth-watering offer for him, it's worth selling him. But I'm also, but I'm also quietly looking... Um, Looking forward to maybe Lucas being um, a very a bit more of an effective player under Nuno than maybe he was under previous managers. I'm hoping. Yeah, I mean, look, he did he did find his best spell under Jose Mourinho playing from a ten, um, mm. and I think that might be his most effective position. I think that's the most effective position he's seen at Tottenham Hotspur so far. Yeah, I just don't think we can afford to play him there. Yeah, that's another I don't thing. Think that's so. another thing because I think we've got too many players in in that position where if you're playing Lucas in a ten, then what, are you going to play Lo Celso or Deli on the right? It's not going to happen. Well, Lo Celso a bit deeper. Um, and yeah, maybe Deli and Lucas fighting for that spot. But who knows? Then who you playing? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just not co- I'm not convinced that Lucas is our best. I think um, whether it's his best position, is he our best number 10? I don't know. Our best number 10 at the moment, you've got to say, is probably Deli. I mean, who, who can you say our best number 10 is? We don't have a proper number 10. I don't know. I mean, I think that we've we've seen more in pre-season playing without a number ten, more of a four-three-three. Yeah, that's why I think that's why I think, and I think that's that that's the how we're going to go forward. I think with the front three kind of being a bit, um, a bit, uh, how do you say, uh, interchangeable? Yeah, and I think that's what we were looking at under Jose Mourinho. We thought that what that's what our best formation. You know, cast your mind back a year going into last season. We thought 4-3-3 was the way to go with Hoybier sitting Lo Celso and Tangi in the middle. Yeah. And then, you It know. just became very predictable when you know, but when we pretty much had one one element of attack was get the ball to Kane. He plays a through ball to Son and he goes through to score. Whereas I think under Nuno, we're going to be a bit more unpredictable, you know, but with Lucas and Bergwijn interchanging. So one of them turning on the right, the left with um, in whoever up being, being up front, whoever it is, um, being able to uh, add that, maybe a bit more unpredictability. So that's what I'm hoping for than it was under Jose. Yeah, but in terms of the Bergwijn Lucas, back to the Bergwijn Lucas debate, I do feel that um, Bergwijn, obviously with his age, he's more moldable. Lucas Mora, you know, kind of leopards don't change their spots, yeah, really. When you he's know? at that age, yeah. Uh, when he's at that age. So I think that, look, we all know Lucas Mora has got brilliant attributes, but he's never, like I said, never done it on a consistent basis. You know, Poch couldn't get it out of him. Jose couldn't really get it out of him. Can Nuno get out of him? I'm I'm not too sure either. Like on a real, think, real I, I, consistent basis. I just feel basis. like Nuno might have a better op- chance to do it than Maybe. Mourinho. Yeah, and, uh, we'll have to Mourinho wait and, how it plays out. But by no, by no means, I think, do I want Lucas Moura sold? I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying there's a lot of players that need to go before him. That's, mm. that's, that's, that's the that's honest truth. That's definitely true. That's definitely true. <laughs>